there, and welcome to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Elka. And today we get to talk about one of my all-time favorite perennial plants. Oh! Yours? Yes, mine. Is it yours <laughs> too? mine too. What? <laughs> well, that's easy to believe. Well, mm. what perennial plant are we talking about? Hostas, Hostas of course. Yes. Gosh, you know, really, truly, I love Hostas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Completely. Yeah. For many, and many reasons. Yeah, lots of reasons. We hope that you uh, will fall in love with Hostas if you haven't actually tried them. And if you do have some, that you'll increase your your adoration for this beautiful perennial plant because it really is worth loving. Mm -hmm. Now, we heard something funny, didn't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even know where it came from. I don't know it, either. <laughs> but uh, apparently, hostas are known as the potato chips of plants. Yes! And I thought, potato chips? What? <laughs> and uh, I think it's related to the slight addiction mm -hmm. that you could get yes. when you start having them and you yeah. love them and then you can't stop having more and more right. and more and more. Right, until you've eaten the whole bag. Except you're not going to eat the <laughs> hostas. Eat no, no, no. <laughs> you're going to plant them because they are... What a fantastic plant. Well, they, you know, they're so variable. They come in so many different sizes, sizes. and shapes and, shapes and colors. And, yeah, uh, and you know, what is it? Texture? And texture. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're wonderful for the shade garden. Uh, a lot of times, those are sort of the ignored areas of people's gardens. Um, you know, between houses, often now they'll build houses quite close together, and there's just kind of this thin sort of alleyway that's very dark. Uh, you can absolutely make that a wonderful space by planting hostas there or any of your shade. Any of it. Yeah, it's actually interesting. A lot of people uh, say, I, I can't garden, I have mm -hmm. only shade. And yeah. one of my favorite mm -hmm. part of my garden is actually the shade, yeah. the shade garden. Yeah. It's, it really yeah, is uh, quite a lovely area. Especially in the hot summer. It's nice to be able to have an area of the garden that is not just neglected, but is actually lush and full of that beautiful foliage that hosta provides, um, hostas provide rather, and it's a nice sort of place that you can retreat to out of the hot sun. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, hostas are pretty impossible to kill. <laughs> I mean, they are, once you've got them in your garden, they really are very easy care. And I know we've said that about other plants, but hostas really are very, very easy. You plant them them and they you know just grow. They, they just, just grow. They just grow and get bigger and better. I, I remember you know you, uh, when you open the bag you get these it's a little a bunch of mm -hmm. roots yeah. uh, so you plant them and you will have beautiful leaves the first year mm -hmm. but every year it gets bigger and bigger and the best part is in the winter they completely die down yeah. and they are they disappear so mm -hmm. you don't have to cut them you don't have to mm -hmm. prune anything. No. Uh, I usually even leave my leaves just on top mm -hmm. uh, but so for, for their own protection for the mm -hmm. un unless you have to mulch it depends mm -hmm. a little bit on the area that you live in right. uh, if you see that uh, what happens here in, in uh, Vancouver we have a lot of rain sometimes they get spots almost like a moldy spot mm -hmm. uh, that's when I take them off because mm -hmm. I don't want to drag any mm -hmm. uh, disease or anything through my garden mm -hmm. uh, but usually they just kind of flop over yeah. they just and they protect just, their own yeah plant and they and go back to where they came from and they feed the earth and the soil again and then next year they come up they so come, they come back yeah. and they get so nice and big mm -hmm. that you can easily lift them out and uh, and divide them if they right. get too big. I, right. I just love the big. One flower. unknown fact about hostas is that they actually produce flowers as well. They're yep. not really known for their flowers, but they do produce these beautiful flowers, usually in pink or in lilac, sometimes in white. Uh, and you can, of course, use those as a cut flower, but you like to use... The leaves. The leaves and the flowers. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a few varieties that are really uh, cool for the flowers. Yeah. But usually I um, I just I stop in my tracks when I see hostas just for the leaves. Because how often uh, is it that you just need a little a vase and yeah. one leaf? And yeah. the hostas just is so striking in itself that mm -hmm. you li literally do not need a flower mm -hmm. to it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's some of the greener varieties make a nice um, edging for a bouquet. Right. You can just kind of go all around with the mm -hmm. leaves. But uh, so, or a single rose, mm -hmm. a single rose with a, a beautiful variegated leaf mm -hmm. of a hosta, mm. just stunning. Yeah. So beautiful. And you can really go to town on designs with hostas in your garden. You know, you can just have it kind of a, you know, willy-nilly. You <laughs> could do all sorts of different kinds of hostas, big ones, small ones, variegated, solid colors, puckered leaves, not puckered leaves, and just have a real, you know, sort of landscape of, of uh, hostas in your garden. Or you could go the, you know, a real traditional route and have areas where you have only one grouping of one type of hosta or the whole 
you know, whatever. I mean, that's what's really great about hostas is because there are so many to choose from mm -hmm. in all different price ranges that you can, you know, you can create and do as you want. Yeah, most, and most likely when you start having them, you probably go for the mixed varieties mm -hmm. because you just want them all and yeah. uh, just having one variety it's almost impossible right. because they're kind of like so eating cool. the, yeah, the potato chips you don't just want the salted ones you want the barbecue flavor maybe the mm -hmm. ketchup a little bit of the nachos <laughs> you know it's that kind of a thing and one last thing of course that we should really mention is that they do wonderfully in containers mm. oh my gosh like this little one here that we've got here planted up they are so great in containers they're easy they fill in they look beautiful there's ones that are sort of more of a dwarf variety if you've got big containers you can put them there gosh you could just go to town with mm -hmm. them they, I, I love them in containers. yeah i do yeah. i do yeah. i just love the hostas and we've got a couple that we want to point out today that have some really interesting and unique features and i'm going to kick it off with the one called brother stefan mm -hmm. it was actually the hosta of the year in 2017 and one of the reasons was is because it just looks so spectacular uh, but also because it's known for its slug resistance so if that's an issue in your garden with the snail and the slugs eating your hostas, this one is the one to choose because they'll leave it alone. Um, I like to think of Brother Stefan as kind of like a pot of gold is what it looks like to me. It's got the beautiful green margins and then in the center it's that beautiful sort of almost yellow gold color yeah. very puckered large leaves oh it's just a beauty um, it apparently was created or developed by a hosta hybridizer her name was Olga Petrosian I hope I pronounced that correctly yes, <laughs> <laughs> and she named it after her brother Stefan for his birthday what a beautiful birthday Seriously, gift eh? that's lovely I want someone to name a, a yeah. hosta for me I have to call my sister say hey yeah. How about you name a plant after me? That's right. Well, first off, she has to get into hybridizing. Yeah, that's well, and That might be an issue, difficult. but yeah, that's beside the point. But yes, Brother Stefan, what a beautiful one to grow. And it's a nice big one, so it, it fills in beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yes. The cherry berry was a very interesting one to me because it has all the things that we were talking about. It has variegated leaves, so very mm -hmm. attractive to me for uh, just using the leaves in sure. flower bouquets. Mm -hmm. It has red stems yeah. on the on the like the flower yeah. stems which cool. is like just just That's that cool. in itself is mm -hmm. uh, awesome and on top of those red stems it mm -hmm. has like a pinkish purplish pinkish flower mm -hmm. like really mm -hmm. uh, when i saw that the first time i thought okay that is a yeah. must have in my garden mm -hmm. because it li literally has all the things you love yeah, about yeah all hostas. the things exactly mm -hmm. exactly well praying hands is a very unique looking hosta it has uh, leaves or foliage that grows more upward than out and splayed. And, and a little rolled in. Yes, and they're kind of curled rough. in, very rippled. And they do actually look like praying hands. A very great one to, to grow in containers. And another really cool thing about the praying hands is actually the leaf um, or the foliage. On the inside, it's rather matte. matte yes. And yeah. on the outside, it's quite shiny. Mm -hmm. uh, just Which you will see. Because yes. the underside of the leaves is, is not it's flat it's because exactly. it's still standing up so you exactly would see it's a nice solid green color it's a great as i said a great one for containers uh you can just you know plant it somewhere where you just want something just a, a little different looking mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. cool yeah i love mm -hmm. it and uh, the revolution mm -hmm. was one that um i don't know it's it's hard to say it was my favorite because every time i see a new one mm -hmm. when it comes out i think okay I what, what is this <laughs> and it's it really is it just happened uh, a few days ago i went through the greenhouses and i i saw a host of little seedlings and i thought what's that look at that they, they're just all so fabulous mm -hmm. revolution uh, i really got uh, stopped by the dark green edges yeah and it has a almost like a creamy, creamy yellow, whitish yeah. center. Which like just, cream cheese. Yeah, cream cheese. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, oh, potato chips, cream cheese. Look there, you got oh, the dip already. Okay, well, <laughs> this is how you start uh, collecting. Exactly. Yeah, just, just lovely, very unique, mm -hmm. beautiful, nice big leaves. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, I just grow them really just right. for the leaves. Right. It's quite revolutionary. Revolutionary. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you can't make up your mind because there's just gosh, so many uh, hostages, 
pastas to choose from and you just want that nice sort of you know uh, mixed look in your garden of course we we always offer a, a, a mix we call it our sea of green hosta mix yeah, yeah. and if you don't care about the named varieties that are in that collection that is a really good one and we've sold many many hundreds and hundreds of this mix over the years yeah. and even if you want to just cover a whole sure. area and then you need lots of that so right because right. we do have varieties that go into the category collector series yes. almost I mean mm -hmm. like uh, they're just also quite up in the, in the price but mm -hmm. really worth every cent because they're mm -hmm. so different and that mm -hmm. it, they are showstopper they right. are real right. uh, yeah they're real uh, unusual plants so that is the great part of, of um, hostas you mm -hmm. get everything from really inexpensive right. you can cover your whole garden with it to collectors item that right, are right. very super special and one of the collectors or collector types that comes to mind is the one called zebra stripe now that yeah is a very interesting looking hosta. Yeah. Wow, that really is a good, the name is perfect for it. Mm -hmm. Very stripy. It's just, it's such a cool one. Or World um, Cup. Or is World another, Cup another cool is another one, yeah. sort of what we would call a collector hosta. Oh gosh, you could just, yeah, there's so many different kinds. Uh, but what we want to encourage and, and really press upon you is that hostas are real problem solvers for your shady areas and they are easy to grow and mm -hmm. easy to maintain. And one last tip actually mm -hmm. I would mention, uh, because they're like shade, uh, I discovered that I can actually have them quite long as a as an indoor plant. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have sunshine in, in the house. Mm -hmm. So what I usually do with mine is I plant them because I like the wood, woodland look of it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I plant them in a container mm -hmm. and I enjoy them. And as soon as I see they are now kind of turning a little, you know, they need something, mm -hmm. maybe turn a little yellow or mm -hmm. they just get a little gaggly or mm -hmm. just long stemmed or something. Mm -hmm. Then I think, okay, you know what? I think they need a little help. Then I take them out of the pot, put them in my yard, uh, and they start growing again. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, they last quite a long time oh, inside. That's good so to it's, know. it's a real yeah. lovely plant. Yeah, who it would have ever thought? Ferns too, by the way. Yeah, oh, well, ferns too. Well, that's mm -hmm. that, that's a whole different episode. We'll go. That's the next. Yeah, day. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we are going to pose our question of the week. If you've watched the Botanist Garden Club before, you know what this is all about. If you're new to the Botanist Garden Club, we like to ask a question based on what we've chatted about today, and then you get to send in your answer, and we give away prizes it's pretty simple so our question today is which hosta that we mentioned today has red stems <laughs> that's an easy one so we want you to send your answer to we uh, yeah, want to send you an answer right. to garden club at botanist.com perfect and then we will gather up all the answers and then we do a draw tomorrow and we will draw out three lucky gardeners who happen to watch this episode and then each one of you will receive a ten dollar botanist gift card just for watching and answering how easy is that ha! just like growing hostas exactly you know what i have a <laughs> hankering for potato chips right now mm, i don't well, know why no pan, no don't do it don't, oh, do, it. don't do it don't do it okay well we hope that you are enjoying your garden these days and uh, of course we look forward to welcoming you back next week on a thursday until then take care take care bye-bye bye-bye